perfect outfit for the following day. I was excited. Not about nude armed infants or epic cosmic surprises, but about my plans. I had the entire day plotted out. The gift, the words I would say, the appropriate timing of both. And it was going to be exactly what I wanted it to be. Perfection. Why would I wait for fate to lend a hand when I had two perfectly capable hands of my own? Confession number one. When I was 10, I started putting confession strips into a box in my closet so that if anything happened to me, people would know that I was more than just the quiet girl who followed the rules. The first Valentine's Day. When my alarm went off on Valentine's Day, I was smiling. To start with, I actually had a boyfriend, and he wasn't just a meh boyfriend either. Josh was smart and handsome, and arguably the most likely student at Hazelwood High to succeed in a big way. Every time we studied together and he put on his Ivy League tortoise shell glasses, I swore that my heart actually folded over on itself, causing the sweet pinching feeling that shot warmth through each and every one of my nerve endings. In hindsight, that feeling was probably some sort of atrial defect caused by my steady diet of black coffee and energy drinks. But I didn't know that yet. I pushed back the covers and climbed out of bed, ignoring the sound of Logan's open-mouthed sleep breathing from the other side of the mattress. My three-year-old stepbrother liked to sneak into my room and sleep with me because he pretty much thought I was amazing. And he was right because as I walked over to where my planner sat open on my desk, I felt amazing. I hummed lover as I put on my glasses and consulted the day's list. To-do list, February 14th. Reorganize scholarship planning binder. Study for lit test. Remind mom to email copy of insurance card to office. Remind dad of parent-teacher conferences and make sure he puts it on his calendar. Send email to internship advisor. Exchange gifts with Josh. Say I love you to Josh. <laughs> I lingered on the last one, picking up my pen and doodling hearts around it. I'd never said those words romantically before. And since our three-month anniversary happened to fall on the day, it was almost as if the universe had scheduled it for me. Filled with buzzy excitement, I went into the bathroom and turned on the shower. As I stuck my head under the stream of water to test the temperature, I heard, Um, are you almost done in there? Ugh. I rolled my eyes and stepped under the water. I just got in here. Joel needs to go potty. Lisa, my dad's wife, sounded like her mouth was planted on the door. Bad. Can't he go upstairs? I poured shampoo into my hand and rubbed it on my head. I adored the twins, but living with toddlers sucked sometimes. Your dad's in there. Sighing, I said, Give me two minutes. I rushed through the rest of the shower, refusing to let the disruption ruin my mood. After toweling off and throwing on my robe, I ran past Lisa and a squirmy Joel back to my basement bedroom. I breezed through blowing out my too curly hair, still humming love songs, before plugging in the iron and steaming out the pesky crease on the right sleeve of my dress. I knew my best friend Chris would roll his eyes and tell me I was being hyper-anal, but why leave the crease when it takes a mere two minutes to get it out? I got dressed and ran upstairs to scarf a protein bar before leaving for school. As I ripped open the wrapper, my eyes wandered over to the pie pan that was sitting beside the microwave like temptation incarnate. Yes, the leftover piece of French silk pie would taste amazing, I thought as I took a big bite of peanut butter and whey. But a slice of sugar and carbs was no way to start the day. I looked away from the chocolate dessert and focused on chewing the dry protein bar.